My name is Bob Atkinson. I'm the uh, Director of Policy Research here at the uh, Columbia Institute for Teleinformation. And I'd like to welcome you here for what I think is going to be a very full day. So uh, that's one of the reasons I'd like to try to stay as, uh, on schedule as much as we can so that uh, we can make this long day uh, work smoothly. The Internet Society has uh, graciously decided to or, uh, has decided to uh, stream this program live, so thank you for that, uh, the Internet Society. So I'd like to first introduce my colleague and the uh, founder and director of CICI, El uh, Thank you very much, uh, thank you very much, Bob. Uh, thank you, guests, uh, thank you, speaker. We're going to have a pretty full house here. Uh, but people are tripping in as they wind their way through the traffic on the east side of the United States General Assembly. Uh, I'd like to thank several people, uh, Jason, wherever he is, Corey, there he is, Raul, wherever he is. Um, uh, uh, of course, Eve and Edot, which I will mention uh, later too, but in particular, uh, Bob Atkinson, who has designed this program. Uh, thank you very much, Bob. He has brought us here together. Now, on top of it, Bob's function here will be to be the kind of the enforcer. All right, we have a traffic management issue in the early too. Our good speaker has so much time for me. Okay, now, uh, and it is a busy week in, uh, in period in New York. There's the United Nations General Assembly. There's the Broadband Commission meeting. There's TPRC that was in Washington yesterday. Uh, there's the Clinton Global uh, Initiative, there are women leaders in ICT, there are all kinds of things happening here right now. And so all kinds, all kinds of rivals and uh, I'm here together in New York. Uh, Obama in Ahmadinejad, uh, Netanyahu in Morsi, uh, Cameron in Olon, uh, Kim and back. Kim, uh, just about anybody. And in that spirit, we brought him here together, Ethno and Google, and uh, uh, David Gross and Hamadon Touré. And uh, so, so we have kind of interesting combinations here, and I hope they will kind of lead to something positive. And now, in the city, of course, is crowded, airport, immigration lines, I heard some horror story, hotel rooms, traffic, and this program is crowded too. So I will not dwell. Uh, usually I provide a longer uh, introduction and interpretation, but I'm yielding most of my time to distinguished uh, guests here. So just a few words. Over the top, where does the expression come from? I looked it up. It was coined during World War I on the French and Belgian fronts. It describes a process which, to simplify, some out of touch, aged commanders ordered brave young men to come out of the trenches, take the offensive, and then almost inevitably get killed by superior defensive fire. And all of this subject to an international regime of rules called the Hague Convention. So is this then a good metaphor? Is this then a good metaphor? <laughs> for uh, for audio, video games and applications over broadband, we will find out today. Now, some of this has already been discussed in the past. So it seems like we are kind of changing the labels for the discussion of this. The same, which was discussed when we talked about VoIP, voice over IP. And VoIP, in turn, has been discussed for resale of voice over lease channels still before then, and value-added services. Remember, this really goes back to the early 1970s and the FCC's first computer inquiry. For example, 40 years ago, uh, about computer processing over telecom, about, then about voice, and now about audio and video in particular. So the underlying story is basic. Speeds have gone up and costs have come down. And this makes it possible to provide mass media such as uh, on an individualized basis, such as music and audio and entertainment video, moving from synchronous broadcast style video to individualized media. 
this is a huge development. We're only at the very early baby steps. Um, and this will be discussed here today as a, uh, as a business proposition and as a policy issue. Uh, it's already been, of course, heavily debated on a number of issues, such as on the level of uh, the balance between infrastructure needs, financial infrastructure needs, services, on top of it, <coughs> using. Infrastructure is expensive and wants to be paid. Media services are young and want to be left alone to grow. So the mental economics push towards price deflation, but market power and maybe regulation pull in another direction. That is the debate. And now we add a second layer, a second dimension. Developing countries want to see money from communications. They also want to protect cultural values and media industries. But their own users and the global media companies don't want to pay this indirect tax. There is still a third layer, uh, which is the balance between self-regulation and national regulation and international regulation. So this is a bit of a three-dimensional chess game. Uh, it is challenging conceptually, uh, politically certainly, and operationally. Uh, and what is important, it's not the end of the story at all, just as Voigt was not the end of the story. The caravan keeps moving on. Transmission speeds and costs will continue to go. Transmission speeds up, costs go down. Uh, we've been talking here at CITI for years now about a project and written about it on ultra broadband. And now Google is uh, initiating in Kansas City a gigabit network. And so, and this is not the end. Companies such as NTT and Deutsche Telekom and others have demonstrated uh, 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 technology demonstrations in the terabit range. So what this will be used for? Well, first, and some of you have heard me talk about this before, a widening, more of everything, more TV channels, more foreign channels, more user-generated content, more video on demand. And current OTT over the top is in that category, the category of widening, more. Uh, but there's a second category that is a deepening, uh, a deepening um, in the next generation of television, the next generation of video, and this is a project we have started here at CITI. Um, on the content side and on the infrastructure side and in between. Uh, this is a soft, this is a uh, video that will provide several elements in various combinations. Two-way, 3D, 4K, P2P, immersive, virtual and augmented, personalized, avatars, virtual worlds, multiplayer games, and on. This type of video will be a voracious user of bandwidth. And it is coming rapidly. The kind of, we are collecting here at CITI the elements. It is quite extraordinary. Networks are moving on fiber. Of course, consumer electronics uh, firms are developing the devices. Middleware software people developing content engineering solutions. Auto, uh, automatized semantic segmentation, video search tools, personalization tools, participation tools, authoring tools, micropayment mechanisms. And this will have, this is coming, and it will have policy dimensions. Some old friends in new, in new guises, new combinations, market power, interconnection, access, international arrangements, pricing, network management, privacy, security, consumer protection, children, adults, trade, IPRs, national culture, and on and on. Interoperability in particular becomes the key in such a global, interactive, multilateral television. There are many types of devices, platforms, countries, industries. Just think, for those of you who follow these things, the discussions over 3D compatibility and interoperability. Or those of you who have watched this, the problems in issues in mashups and copyrights and financial and constitutional issues, who controls, who can do what to whom and why. And because policy cannot move at Moore's law speed, and because the world will not stand still, we need to think early about this and proactively. And this step is, this conference is one step in that direction. And the next step is what we plan to do here at CITI at the Columbia Institute for, uh, for Teleinformation Initiative on the next generation of video. 
Uh, and it gives me great pleasure to let you know about it. We don't believe that governments and organiz uh, government international organizations can do this. It's too early. We don't think we should leave it to the techies because they think only in technology, mostly in technology dimensions, and it's not just the technology dimensions. So universities are good about the brainstorming element here, and this is what we plan to do, and it gives me therefore great pleasure to tell you that we are doing this as a major project CITI. We are looking for partners, and what better partners than across the Atlantic and Pacific with friends and partners here. So we invite you to join with us in this project. So to conclude, <laughs> and put into perspective, OTT is the logical present next step to the development of the past. And it is the foundation for the principles of the future when a new type of television media is emerging, which is why it is doubly, especially important. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing this journey. And now, uh, here's my friend and partner in this transatlantic uh, dialogue, Yves Gasson of France's renowned research institute, institution EDAT. Thank you, uh, Eli. I will be uh, very brief. I have uh, in front of me uh, Bob, and I, I know that uh, I have to take care about uh, the time uh, and to respect also uh, the uh, distinguished speaker that we have for this uh, day. Uh, thank you, uh, Eli, uh, again for uh, welcoming uh, this uh, transatlantic. Uh, Telecom Dialogue, every year we are trying to confront, to co compare the debate that we have uh, in, in Europe but, uh, with the hot issue that you can have here in the uh, in US. And uh, it was uh, very uh, easy to have an agreement uh, with uh, CP about uh, the theme, the topic of this uh, annual uh, transatlantic uh, to be included in your uh, State of uh, Telecom uh, 2012. And uh, it was easy, again, uh, uh, to consider that uh, the main uh, issue for the uh, telecommunication uh, industry is, of course, to, to find a new uh, place in a new uh, business uh, shell that we have now with uh, IP uh, everywhere and uh, with the natural migration of the application and services towards the uh, over-the-top uh, side. So there, there are plenty, I'm coming directly to the conclusion, uh, excuse me, but I'm sure that uh, you will have a rich uh, additional uh, comment during uh, the day. But if you are trying to, to compare, if you were a situation from the uh, both side of the uh, Atlantic, we can uh, say that uh, we have uh, a common, uh, we have plenty of uh, common things. Uh, among uh, the uh, telcos here in the US and telco in, uh, in Europe. I don't know how to, to use the, the command of the slide. Uh, just uh, one slide. Okay, thank you. Uh, if I'm talking about the uh, shared uh, issue, uh, of course, uh, there is uh, the question of the uh, traffic, the growth of uh, traffic and, and the uh, impact of the uh, capex. Uh, we have also all uh, the uh, what uh, keywords like uh, smart access to not become a dumb pipe, uh, tiered uh, pricing, which is particularly important uh, now in, in, in Europe, the debate of the neutrality with pay clearing uh, versus uh, uh, three uh, billion, uh, or uh, also investment in the uh, software uh, application uh, to be in situation to offer uh, policy uh, control and real uh, time uh, charging to your uh, customers. The debate between uh, retail and uh, wholesale uh, opportunity, what we are now uh, calling the two sided approach of the uh, telecommunication uh, market. Uh, and maybe particularly uh, in Europe, uh, the debate about uh, uh, the infrastructure sharing uh, in, in for fixed, but also and particularly for wireless uh, application. The end also, the potential end, it's uh, easier to say than to do, 
uh, of the uh, device uh, subsidized. Uh, the perspective of machine to machine, but it may be uh, over 1% of the uh, telco's uh, revenue, not uh, bad, with a good uh, margin, but it's not enough to define uh, what may become a uh, 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 smart uh, access uh, strategy. And the opportunity associated to cloud, big uh, data, and at the end, consolidation. I, I, I think that here also, uh, you have to discuss all uh, the uh, potential that we have uh, uh, behind these uh, key words. But there are also plenty of differences, particularly when we are taking into account uh, the specific context in, in which is the uh, telecom industry uh, in Europe. Uh, you have to know that uh, for two years now we are in recession, uh, not for Wi-Fi because it's the okay, case for uh, many years, like here in the US, except the uh, cable industry. Uh, but for the wireless uh, industry, for two years, we are in recession in, in Europe. Uh, you can uh, compare uh, minus 3% uh, during the last uh, quarter in, in Europe, year over the year. And uh, it was uh, 5% per year for the uh, wireless uh, leaders. Uh, maybe behind, uh, behind this uh, situation, uh, there is uh, firstly the uh, health impact of the uh, macroeconomic uh, situation, uh, particularly for a country of the south of uh, Europe. I just uh, give a uh, the data regarding the uh, situation in Spain for Telefonica wireless during the, the last uh, uh, quarter. We have also uh, a very fragmented uh, industry if we compare with the global market that uh, the United States is uh, representing. We have uh, 27 uh, national uh, markets, in each uh, market only for wireless, we have uh, at least uh, three uh, competitors. And of course, there is an impact in the economy of scale of such a situation. Uh, and uh, if we are looking at the uh, in, in next generation uh, access uh, rollout, uh, we can say also that uh, we are uh, lagging uh, behind. It's true for fiber, but it's also true now for LTE, and it's the first time that Europe is lagging uh, behind in terms of uh, mobile uh, generation after the uh, GSM and after the uh, PP. And beyond that, uh, if we are looking at the global context uh, of uh, Europe, uh, and uh, we don't have only, we, we have only uh, telecommunications, we have the same situation that we can uh, enjoy here in the US with Hollywood, with uh, Microsoft, with uh, Amazon, uh, with uh, Apple, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, and uh, Google. So, it's harder and it can explain maybe some uh, positions which are defended uh, by the uh, European people uh, and which will be uh, presented uh, during uh, the day. Uh, thank you again, uh, Amy, for this uh, opportunity to organize the uh, telecom uh, on the public uh, dialogue. Uh, thank you for your uh, participation. I just finished uh, adding that uh, we will organize uh, a global summit next November in, in Europe in uh, Montpellier, during which we will uh, come back on all these uh, issues. Have a very good uh, day. Thank you.